Well, I came up with the title for the album. I was warned, actually, by a lot of people that it may be misinterpreted because uh, a lot of people's immediate reaction was that I was asking people to listen without prejudice, as though the prejudice was normally directed against me or towards me, which is true in some cases. But um, really what I was talking about was that the album should be listened to by all types and all races, really, with an open mind, because I think radio and, and video in the last three or four years has veered very much in two separate directions, one for kind of white America and one for black America. And I think that it's quite an unhealthy trend. My main objective in making this album was just to make an album which was completely my own, in a sense. I think until now there's always been some compromise because I've always felt that I wanted to move from one place to another. In other words, um, I mean very definitely with Faith I had to move away from uh, what the public perception of me was with um, Andrew in Wham. If I had made this album after for instance, the last Wham! album, I don't think people would have accepted it from me. I think there's always a matter of timing that has to be involved in a musical career, and I don't think it's just a matter of thinking about business. It's a matter of, if you write a song, you want to feel that it's not going to be bypassed because of people's perceptions of you. Uh, and I think people have to be ready for what you're going to do. And now I, I think they are ready for this album. So I, I made this album purely with the, the goal of making a great album. I wasn't thinking in terms of who would buy it, who would listen to it. I think I was fairly confident that it was going to get a hearing, wh whatever I did. Therefore, I could be relaxed and just make an album that um, I would really like to listen back to. I think one of the beauties of writing is that your interpretation... The listener's interpretation can be completely off, but it really means something to them. That's the point. Um, and I think that's another very strong reason I felt that there shouldn't be any kind of visual interpretation of the song, which is why there's no video. And I think that more and more, uh, as video advances, people's way of listening to music becomes far less imaginative. And not just less imaginative, I think it's, it's done a disservice because the best music is always open to interpretation and open to complete emotion. And you shouldn't have a storyboard running through your mind when you're listening to it. It should mean something different to each person. I really feel that with this song. I, I felt when I'd finished it that I really didn't want to lay down something for people to make messages clearer, because maybe my messages would be not as strong as the ones they'd feel themselves, you know? When I came into the business, I had no idea that I was going to be any kind of physical entity. I'd grown up with Andrew. I was a particularly unattractive um, adolescent and uh, he was always very handsome and I always assumed that the vast majority of, of physical attention would be on Andrew. I think when things changed and I started to feel some of that I got completely carried away because after all I was 19, 20 years old. Suddenly um, I was considered attractive and I was still very insecure and I spent years um, working through those insecurities, I think. And really, in a sense, um, it was a distraction. It was like a six year long distraction to me. I had to work out that the most important thing in the world was not to have people think you were gorgeous, you know. And I eventually came to that decision and, and this song is really about that. It's about me moving away from um, kind of selling myself as a physical persona and just getting on with what I'm best at, which is writing songs. I think it would be safe to say that I was confident that making an album this time that pleased me entirely would be at the same time making an album for everyone else. I think I have the confidence now to believe that. Um, I mean, I may be completely wrong, but uh, I'm very pleased with it and the reaction I've had is, uh, well, I guess it's kind of pleasant surprise, I think, that the changes are very drastic in some ways, but also um, that people enjoy them. With this album, the lyrics tended to come first, definitely. The inspiration came from the lyrics rather than uh, melodies. And then it was a matter of finding melodies in my head to match and equal the power of the lyrics. Probably it's the first time that's happened. I mean, I think until now my overall priority has been with melody. I think probably until now I was a little bit reluctant to tell the world what I felt about certain things. I think that that comes, for one, from being English, because the English tend to have a real, especially in my position, when it comes to pop stars, it's very it frowned upon to take yourself seriously if you have been any kind of a lightweight pop star in the past, you know. Um, so I was kind of nervous of doing that. But also I think as you get older you, uh, you form your opinions much more strongly, they kind of crystallise. I've always written from a point of view of wanting things to be heard 
for different reasons. I mean, I think Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, however much people have put it down, I think it was very much a very strong pop record. And I think the best of my material, even from really early material, there's no doubt that people of my generation, when they hear in 20 years' time, they're going to remember it, they're going to be nostalgic about it, because it actually was that it made an impression. I think the same thing applies in some ways, I think Careless Whisper is fairly lightweight, even though people love it, but I know it will be around. That is the way I write. I mean, I've always written with a complete disregard for whether or not it's something really applied to now. I mean, quite often it did apply to now, but my real feeling about a song is that it should be able to be taken out of context and without everything that's going on around it and still sound good, that's the point. What I think will make me happy now is to feel that I'm recognised for constantly trying to push what I'm doing musically to another level. And that, to me, is an unbelievable driving force, and it's much stronger than my ambitions were to be famous. I don't know anyone who can live without music. You get out of bed, and a piece of music can make a difference to the way you start the day. That's what music is about. Music is completely about your emotions. You take music and use it to amplify what you want to feel. Of course it changes people's lives. It will always change people's lives. It's there. I'm just very glad that it's changed my life to the degree that it has, that it's become the centre of my life. I feel very lucky that that's the case.